Welcome back! In this video, we are going to discuss trajectories. We are going to dive into a script that demonstrates how to predict the trajectory of a projectile, a thrown object, or a grenade, or anything that travels through the air, and predict where it will land, accounting for both gravity and drag, so that any projectile is accurately predicted regardless of physical properties. So let's get started. Let's say we have a cannon firing a projectile with some force. To predict this curve, we need to know a few things. The initial velocity, initial position, as well as the other forces acting on it, such as gravity and drag. We want to create points along this curve, and so we also need to assign some interval in the form of time or distance. This allows us to change how spaced out these points are. We can think of this as the resolution, or how detailed our calculation will be. We can add the velocity to the initial starting position to predict where the projectile will be, take this further and keep iterating until we hit something, and now we can see the entire arc. We then want to raycast between each point to try to find where the projectile will land. I am also taking into account a slight overlap between these points to make sure no surface gets between them and is missed. We raycast from point to point, following along just as the projectile will until we hit a surface. At this point, we can stop our calculation and either show some hit marker or some other effect. Unfortunately, calculating bounces is very difficult with this approach. There are simply too many factors and unknowns to properly predict how an object will bounce. If that's what you're looking for, you need to create an entire physics scene where Unity can perform simulation ahead of time. There are ways to do this, and I will link some resources in the description down below, but I will not cover those in this video. I have created this simple scene with some low poly assets that I scrambled together. The project is otherwise empty, and all we have are these assets. We want to be able to aim with our cannon here. I will use an old mouse movement script that I typically use for FPS stuff. It is perfectly capable of moving our cannon as well. To use it, we also need to set up the Unity input system. If you haven't already installed the package, you need to do so from the package manager. We need to make sure we are using the new input system in our project settings. We create our input settings. Make sure to have generate c -sharp class ticked. A new action called mouse look need to be of type value delta, and we are using the delta pointer, not the mouse. That's an easy mistake to make. I'm not sure if it's just my mouse being highly sensitive, but I almost always use a sensitivity value of 0.1. We can now move our cannon, though not quite as I imagined it. We need to make some adjustments. I will parent the camera to the base, put the mouse look script on the cannon itself, and select the base as the body. This means our cannon tilts up and down, while the base rotates horizontally. Okay, now let's get to the actual good stuff, the code. I will create two scripts. One will be responsible for shooting the actual object, while the other will only calculate their trajectory. Our two main scripts here are the projectile throw and trajectory predictor. Let's begin with projectile throw. I'm using the require component attribute to make sure the predictor always exists on the same object and is added automatically once we attach this script to an object. We still need to keep a reference to it. We also keep a reference to the object, which we will shoot or throw. The starting force is available in the inspector, as is start position. To start off, we are just calling on predict in our predictor class. I have also created a struct to house all the needed properties that the predictor needs, such as direction, starting position, speed, mass, and drag. The predictor can now calculate based on those properties. The predictor calculates the initial velocity of the projectiles based on its initial speed, mass, and the given direction. Inside of a fold, we then iterate over a series of points along the trajectory, estimate the next position of the projectile based on the current position and velocity, check for collision with surfaces using ray casting, update the line renderer to display their trajectory and the hit marker to indicate the collision point, stop updating trajectory and display the hit marker when a collision occurs, calculate new velocity, calculates the new velocity of her projectile based on the current velocity, drag, and time increment. Update line renderer. Updates the line renderer component with the specified number of points and sets the position of an individual point. This may look odd, 
and that's probably because I'm using a tuple here. This function does two things. It sets the max number of points in the line render, and it also sets a single individual point. That probably seems even weirder, but throughout the class I kept doing both of these things multiple times, but just with different values. So I collapsed them into a single function. I needed to differentiate the count of points from setting the singular point. So the individual point is set using a tuple called point position. Like back in the raycast, I used it to trim the end of the line renderer, so it doesn't keep calculating past the point of collision. I set the max number of points to the current iteration, and then snap the last point to the point of collision itself. I hope this makes sense. It might not be scalable, but it fits perfectly with what the class does as of now. We can now see how all of this works to create a trajectory in our scene. I'm adjusting settings on the projectile prefab itself here. Physical properties such as drag and mass accurately affect our prediction. You can also see how drag looks terrible at higher values. Something new I learned while doing this is that you can create a local action and binding on your own scripts without bringing up the input interface. Here I declare a local input called fire, and I can then bind and customize the action on the script itself. Now to add the code for firing the projectile. In the projectile throw class, we need to handle the new input just as we would normally and we receive the callback of the action using input action dot callback context. Now we will instantiate the object at the start position and add our throw force to it. The projectile is a simple ball prefab. We can see how it lands where we predicted. Kind of. It's hard to see if it's far away. So we want to put something just at the end so we can see it more clearly. So I'm creating a plane, removing its collider and assigning it a sprite. We need a new material for it that is set to unlit and transparent. And now we have something of a bullseye that we can move to the end of a line. Move hit marker receives the raycast hit data and uses it to move the hit marker to the collision point and adjust its rotation to align with the surface normal. We also offset it somewhat from the surface to avoid them overlapping. This is also how you would typically do bullet holes and stuff if you're not using decals. Decals, decals, and I can make the scene a little larger and play around with increasing the force. It should still be entirely accurate. Here is our end result. Two simple scripts that could be attached and used pretty much anywhere. And that wraps it up. You've now learned how to predict and visualize a projectile's trajectory using the Trajectory Predictor class. Feel free to experiment with the code and add your own enhancements. There is a link to the project in the description down below. Feel free to comment if you have any questions and I will be glad to help as best I can. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Unity tutorials. Until next time, happy coding!